in this presentation we are going to look at the exponential distribution so the exponential distribution may be uh, used to answer the following questions how much time will elapse before an earthquake occurs in a given region how long do we need to wait before a customer enters a shop how long will it take before a call center receives the next phone call and how long will a piece of machinery work without breaking down now in those four questions, time is the common uh, is in com is the commonality between all four of those. It doesn't actually uh, the exponential distribution is not only for time, but um, it's the easiest uh, point to start at for the exponential distribution. So we'll use it for the time being. So uh, let's move on. Just as a quick remark, time is a continuous variable. So that is uh, why the exponential distribution will be a continuous. Uh, probability distribution. So all of these questions uh, concern the time we need to wait before a given event occurs and if this waiting uh, time is unknown it is often appropriate to think of it as, ran as a random variable having an exponential distribution. The time x we're going to call our variable x our waiting time or our time without breaking whatever we're going to call that x from now on. That we time we need to wait before an event occurs has an exponential distribution if the probability that the event occurs during a given time is proportional to the length of the time period. That is something that is actually going to come up uh, as being very important later on. So I'll just uh, indicate that little arrow there. That's actually quite an important statement here. Maybe not so obvious now, but it will be later on. So the probability density function of the exponential distribution is given as follows. So x is some time period. This is like uh, some value of um, some realization, for example, two years or 10 seconds or something like that. Lambda is this thing called the rate parameter. OK, we're going to see a lot of that later on. And it is the inverse of the expected duration. So we could sort of say mu equals 1 over lambda or lambda equals 1 over mu both of those are actually equivalent to one another uh, we're, I'm actually going to call this the expected value instead but it actually is called mu um, also I'm just going to stick with e, uh, the expected value of x later on now we cannot have a negative uh, uh, period of time Okay, you can't wait less than five seconds. So really, that is why we'd have a zero here. If we have a negative uh, time period, the probability of that is zero because that is an impossible event. So it's the top line we're going to look at. So uh, lambda times e to the power of minus lambda x. Okay, so uh, again, the key thing to pick up on here is the rate parameter. Now. Uh, if the expected duration is 5, let's say, for example, 5 seconds, then the rate parameter is 0 0.2. The reason I mentioned that actually is because that is the way the information might be given in an exam question. You might be given the uh, expected value and asked to determine the rate parameter. So it is 0 0.2 if the expected duration is 5. Now, what is the expected duration? It is the amount of time you expect to wait, or the amount of time you, you expect to wait before a new customer will call your telephone to, uh, a center, or the amount of time you expect a machine to uh, operate without breaking down. That's the expected duration. So, let's move on. So this is a bit more relevant to what we're going to do. It's the cumulative density function here, the CDF. And the cumulative density function of, is given as follows. So again, for some time period x, the probability of uh, a duration less than that is equal to 1 minus e uh, to the power of minus lambda x. And again, we can't have negative time periods, so that's why we have a 0 here. Okay, so this is the formal definition here, but this is actually the, the, the second equation I hear is a bit easier to work with uh, for pen and paper calculations. So this is the one you'd have to remember. Uh, and actually, it's not actually given in a lot of exam papers because it actually is quite easy to remember. So for example, suppose lambda is not point 0.3 and suppose that 
x is equal to 10. What we might do is sort of say the probability of x less than or equal to 10 equals 1 minus, multiply those two terms out, we get e to the minus 3, something like that. And then we should, can just work it out on a calculator. So the probability of uh, x less than 10 is, we can just uh, work uh, on the calculator and solve that. We're going to do a bit of that later on, so I'm not going to do it now. So moving on, this uh, two important matters, the expected value of the random variable x is given as follows. I mentioned this earlier on as mu, but I'm going to uh, use e, to e of x from now on, the expected value of x. The uh, variance of an exponential random variable is also uh, v of x, which is 1 over lambda squared. Actually, another way is you can sort of figure, uh, quick that, uh, figure that out quickly is just consider it as mu squared, or the expected value of x squared. So it's actually quite easy to remember in this case. So let's move on. We have an example here now. Assume that a, the length of a phone call in minutes is an expen exponential random variable with a rate parameter of 1 divided by 10, 1 tenth, or 0 0.1 even. So if the someone arrives at a phone booth just before you arrive, find the probability that you have to wait less than 5 minutes, greater than 5 minutes, and uh, between 5 minutes and 10 minutes. So And also compute the expected value and variance. I'm actually going to change that to 10 minutes, just to uh, make that a, a little bit easier to work with, because I'm actually going to sort of just to speed things up. So let's move on. So let's do the first one. So compute the probability of a, a, a x less than or equal to 5 when the rate parameter lambda is 1 tenth. Now I put, included this equation that we're going to use. So let's first off put in our values here. The probability of x less than or equal to 5 equals 1 minus e uh, by minus 5 uh, over 1 tenth. That's 1 minus e 5 over 10. That's equal to 1 minus e to minus 0 0.5. So this is where we get out our calculators. And that is equal to that is equal to one minus not point six zero six six. I'm just gonna write it at four decimal places. You might get values slightly different to that. And then you would, the answer is therefore I'm gonna write this in red pen not point three nine three four. Okay, so you might get a value slightly different to that, just depends on the way you round it. But it should be around 39%, not 0.3934. So that's the answer to the first one. So let's move on to the second one here. I've actually changed it a bit. There, sorry, first off, that is the um, uh, a sort of uh, a easier. Uh, version of what I've just written in the last slide. Again, a little bit of rounding error comes into play. So this is actually now 0.6065 with a few extra numbers there, but then I just rounded it to four, dec uh, four decimal places. So that's how we would uh, calculate that. And again, it's just a bit easier to read. So if you want to sort of uh, pause and just take that down, that's a good time to do it. So let's move on to the next one. So compute the probability of x greater than or equal to 10 when lam lambda equals 1 divided by 10. Now, this is what we, uh, first important point here to pick up on, is that is greater than or equal to 10. That's the complement. So what we're going to do is apply the complement rule here. Okay. So the probability of x greater than or equal to uh, small x, the time period bit greater than or equal to small x, is the complement of this. So we have 1 minus this here. Now, that's, let's just see how did I get uh, get to here. This is the actual equation we're going to use. It's actually very simple. So essentially, this is 1 minus e to the lambda x. Uh, and what we're going to do is go 1 minus that. The 1's cancel out. 1 minus 1 is just 0. And that minus there and that minus there just gives us a plus. 
So again, it's straightforward complement rule. So this equation here, or this term here, is the one we're going to use. So it's actually quite easy. So what is it? Well, uh, we have x small x is 10 and lambda is 1 tenth. So probability of x greater than or equal to 10 is equal to e to the minus 10 over 10, which is e to the minus 1. And working that out on a calculator, we get not point three six seven eight. So that's the answer to the second one there. So the probability of x greater than or equal to ten is that there. No point three six seven eight. So again on the next slide I have this written a bit neater. You have a read of that there. Uh, pause it if you want to pause it there. So again that's ten multiplied by one over ten, which is ten over ten, which is just one and also the minus sign. Okay, so the that's the answer there. So let's move on to the last part. What is the probability of x between uh, 5 and 10? So this is where we you would use the, uh, the sort of interval rule approach, or the interval approach. So the probability of being inside the interval, okay, is the complement of being outside the interval, okay? So the probability of being inside the interval is the uh, one minus the probability of being outside the interval. So it's very stands to reason. So this uh, approach here is the interval approach and it is really handy when you do these questions. So, the probability of being outside the interval is the composite event or the joint event of being too low for the interval probability of x less than or equal to 5, or being too high for the interval, the little typo there, it actually should be x greater than or equal to 10. So, this is too low here, and this is too high here, and together they are the outside the interval. And this is the probability of being inside the interval. And we have this one minus term here. So that's the complement rule. So well, all we have to do is add the probability of being too low to the probability of being too high. That gives us the probability of being outside. And then just find the complement of that. So the probability of being too low, probability of x less than or equal to 5, was 0.3934. Again, that's something we've done earlier. The probability of being too high, probability of x greater than or equal to 10, that is 0.3678. So the probability of being outside is just add those two numbers together. And so it's 0.3934 plus 0.3678. And then we get our answer there, that's 0.6712. Again, you might uh, get slightly different numbers, just depending on how well you rounded it on the calculator. So the probability of being inside the interval is the complement of that. And so the answer is 0.2388, so about 23%. So that is the answer to the part C. We have one more job left, that is to compute the expected value and the variance. So the expected value of the, of the variable is 1 divided by 1 tenth, that is just simply 10. Again, something I actually mentioned earlier, so uh, that is uh, equal to mu, okay? And that's equal to mu squared, that's the expected value uh, squared. So that's actually quite easy to do in this particular instance. So that would actually be 10 um, minutes properly. And that's 10 minutes or 100 minutes squared. So you actually would sort of say 10 minutes, the standard deviation of 10 minutes.